Hello and welcome to the course on dealing with materials data. Presently we are going through the sessions on hypothesis testing. We have so far considered the sessions uh, way which deals with. So, if we quickly write down what we have seen. We have dealt with the hypothesis H0 or H0 null hypothesis that mu is equal to mu 0. We have assumed that population is normal. with mean mu and variance sigma square. And we consider two possibilities, possibility A when sigma 0 sorry sigma square is known and other possibility we deal with is when sigma square is unknown. In either case we would like to discuss or we have already discussed the three alternates. The first alternative we talked is a two sided alternative that mu is not equal to mu 0. Second alternative is that mu is greater than mu 0 and the third alternative we have discussed is mu is less than mu 0 under both the cases that sigma square is known and sigma square is unknown. We found when sigma square is known, we found that test statistic is z which is x bar minus mu 0 over sigma square root n. Here we have assumed that we have a sample x1, x2, x3, xn is a random sample from normal population with mean mu and variance sigma square. So, x bar is an average of x1, x2, x3, xn. And we found that this is distributed as normal 0, 1. It has no unknown parameters. It is completely known distribution. And therefore, if we consider the alternative that mu is not equal to mu 0, we found that the critical region can be defined as probability uh, or the probability of critical region can be defined as a z in absolute value is greater than some value z which should be alpha where alpha is fixed is the type 1 error. This is under h 0 that is when the null hypothesis is true uh, we call this as a uh, this is the critical region and this is the probability of critical region which is equal to alpha. And then we find that actually in that case probability of z greater than small z 1 minus alpha by 2 is equal to alpha by 2 and this is the in that case z 1 minus alpha by 2 is a critical value. Means that the decision is going to be reject H0 if this statistic z is greater than z 1 minus alpha by 2. If we take the 
alternate of mu greater than mu 0, then again the test statistic is same. is z and the critical region let us properly define it is x1, x2, xn such that z is greater than some value z, small z. This is your critical region under edge 0. So, so you can say that probability of critical region under edge 0 is equal to probability that z is greater than small z should be alpha and therefore what we find is that it has to be probability that z greater than z 1 minus alpha is equal to alpha. If this 1 minus alpha by 2 and 1 minus alpha is confusing you, I would like to re remind you that you take a standard normal population, this is normal 0, 1, this is your mean 0, then z of z sub a is defined as this probability, so that this probability is a. So, in this case if we want uh, this probability to be alpha then a has to be 1 minus alpha and therefore we are taking 1 minus alpha or similarly we are taking this because this is two sided. So, then when we come to the next possibility is that alternate of h that mu is less than mu naught, then our critical region is going to be x1, x2, xn such that z is less than small z, sorry it should be this way curled bracket. So, probability of c under h 0 is equal to probability of z less than small z which should be alpha. And therefore, we find that probability of z less than z alpha is equal to alpha and therefore, the critical value this is the critical value. this is the critical value. In this case the decision is in the previous case the decision is if reject h 0 if z is greater than z small z 1 minus alpha and in this case the decision would be reject h 0 if z is smaller than small z alpha. So, this is what we have done so far. Next thing what we have made change is that uh, suppose we are taking the sigma square as unknown. Then please recall that the z statistics turns into a t statistic which is same as x bar minus mu 0 divided by s over square root n where s is the sample standard deviation. 
and now this is distributed as T with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So, again there is no parametric dependence on it we already know n. So, we know n minus 1. So, we know the distribution this should be small t sorry. It is a distribution that we are already aware of and therefore, now you can start that your h 0 which says that mu is equal to mu 0 under h 1 that mu is not equal to mu 0. Your critical region is going to be all x 1, x 2, x 3, x n such that the absolute value of t is greater than some t that is if you take a t distribution which is a symmetric distribution and we say that if t lies in any of this area it is our rejection region within this area we accept it. So, when with a fixed alpha from the beginning we would like to have probability of critical region given h 0 which is probability of absolute t greater than small t which has to be alpha and therefore, just as we did in the previous case capital T greater than 1 minus alpha by 2 has to be alpha by 2 and this becomes your criteria for decision where you will say that uh, H 0 to be rejected sorry rejected if t is greater than small t 1 minus alpha by 2 sorry here I should write n minus 1 and here also I should write n minus 1 because that specifies is degrees of freedom. So, on the same line quickly we can say that if we consider the testing of hypothesis H 1 I mean the sorry the alternate of H 2 which says that mu is greater than mu 0 then do I need to give much explanation please recall our decision is reject H 0 if the same t is greater than small t 1 minus alpha with n minus 1 degree of freedom. And in the case of the third hypothesis mu less than mu 0 third alternate hypothesis the, the decision making is going to be reject H 0 if t is less than t alpha n minus 1 n minus 1 is degrees of freedom. So, this is what we have learned so far in the hypothesis testing. The important two statistics we have found so far is z which is x bar minus mu 0 over sigma square root n distributed as a normal 0 1 and in the other case our test statistic is t which is x bar minus mu 0 over sample standard deviation square root n which is distributed as a student's tree distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. In the today's case what we would like to do is consider a case when you want to test that sigma square itself is equal to some predecided value sigma 0. So, today what we want to consider is a case of sigma square is equal to sigma naught square where sigma square is population variance. and sigma naught square is given. When this is the case,
when this is the case uh, we start out that we have a sample x1, x2, x3, xn from again a normal population with mean mu and sigma square and we want to sigma square is unknown hmm. and we want to test the hypothesis that sigma square is a given value sigma naught square. The situation can arise just as it would arise in a any testing of hypothesis for mu is equal to mu 0. Again we consider the alternate hypothesis H1 first as sigma square is not equal to sigma naught square. It is a two sided alternative. Okay. Let us follow the six steps. Let us follow the six steps of hypothesis testing. So, first step is that fix alpha. Okay, so, we have fixed up alpha. Number 2, clearly write your hypothesis, null hypothesis which is sigma square is equal to sigma naught square and your alternative versus you are testing against the alternative H1 which says that sigma square is not equal to sigma 1 sigma 0 square. Okay. What is the best statistic to represent this sigma 0? Well, we know that S square which is equal to 1 over n minus 1 summation i is equal to 1 to n x i minus x bar whole square this is just to recall is a good statistic because expected value of s square is equal to sigma square we have shown it in the past. And therefore, the fourth step we can define a critical region such that x1, x2, x3, xn should be such that the s square value is larger than some uh, let us call it x value. Okay. This is going to be our critical region. So, in that case fifth step is to identify the critical region. So, we find that n minus 1 times s square divided by sigma square is distributed as chi square with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Please recall this n minus 1 times the sample variance divided by the population variance is distributed as chi square n minus 1 and chi square n minus 1 does not depend on any parameter it is n minus 1 which is already known because you already have a sample of size n. So, you already know n. Okay. So, therefore, your probability is that n minus 1 s square over sigma square which I call it an x uh, this will create a confusion. So, let us call it a y such uh, uh, under the condition H0 this probability should sorry this greater than x should be greater uh, should be equal to alpha. I will rewrite this so that there is a very cl uh, clarity in it y which is equal to n minus 1 s square over sigma square is greater than x under H0 this should probability should be alpha. If H0 is correct this means that you are looking for probability of y which is n minus 1 s square over sigma naught square greater than x should be alpha. Now, because the alternate is on both sides actually this is insufficient. We have to say that 
for alternate which is both sides that which says that sigma square is not equal to sigma naught square in a chi square distribution it should lie somewhere between two limits a and b where this is also alpha by 2 and this is alpha by 2. So, considering that we modify our critical region as y less than a union y greater than b such that this is a mathematical sign for such that such that probability of y less than a under h 0 is equal to alpha by 2 and probability of y greater than b I think I it is better that I use an eraser because it is creating a problem. So, here we are y greater than b under h 0 should be alpha by 2. So, here please remember you cannot have a single critical value because chi square distribution is not a symmetric distribution, it is a skewed distribution and therefore you cannot have a solution like you had it with respect to the standard normal vari uh, distribution and the t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And therefore, actually you are going to have to find two critical values and these two critical values can be given as chi square n minus 1 alpha by 2 and b is going to be chi square n minus 1 1 minus alpha by 2. Please remember we are always considering the probability on the left hand side of the value. So, these are your critical value and your decision is going to be reject h 0 if either p pro sorry either y which is n minus 1 s square over sigma naught square is less than chi square n minus 1 alpha by 2 or y is greater than chi square n minus 1 1 minus alpha by 2. I hope this is clear that uh, we are what we find let us quickly go through it. If we follow the sixth step this is the sixth step. So, if we follow the sixth step we fix the first alpha value. So, first we fix an alpha value this is our null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis. We find that S square is the correct statistic to take to find a test statistic for this or to find a critical region for this test and therefore this test statistic uh, we chose as a sample variance because expected value of sample variance is the population variance. Then we define a critical region x1, x2, x3, xn such that x square should be greater than x and then uh, we take uh, appropriate statistic which would be devoid of any uh, unknown parameter. So, we say that it is n minus 1 uh, I better write a parenthesis here. So, it is n minus 1 s square over sigma square 
actually here itself I should have used this kind of an arrangement. But uh, uh, we have actually continued with uh, the same arrangement, but we find that when you simplify this and you want to find the critical value, we realize that this is a two sided hypothesis and therefore we must have the two values, we must have the two values A and B and therefore we find that the critical region can be modified to this and finally we come up with a test. Now I believe it is not very difficult to understand as to what would be the case if you take H0 as sigma square is equal to sigma naught square versus H2 which says that sigma square is greater than sigma naught square. Then naturally you will say that your test statistic is y which is n minus 1 s square over sigma square and uh, this is distributed as chi square with n minus 1 degrees of freedom under h 0 ok. And therefore, a probability of y greater than x has to be alpha. Now we are correct because if you look at the region, we want the sigma square to be greater than sigma naught square, this is sigma naught square, then you would like to have it greater than some value which is a critical value which will be a critical value which I am calling x. But now you can make out that then in that case x is nothing but chi square with n minus 1 degrees of freedom and 1 minus alpha. Please remember again if you take the alpha uh, chi square distribution and if you wish to have this value such that this is alpha in that case this area is 1 minus alpha and therefore this value is I call it sorry chi square n minus 1, 1 minus alpha. So that is the value which will come. So the decision is going to be reject H0 if n minus 1 s square over sigma naught square is greater than chi square with value of chi square with n minus 1 degrees of freedom at 1 minus alpha probability. Similarly, you can easily show that if you want to test the hypothesis H0 is equal to sigma square is equal to sigma naught square versus the hypothesis H3 which says that sigma square is less than sigma naught square. Then your test statistic is same which is uh, The test statistic is going to be n minus 1 s square divided by sigma 0 square which will be distributed as chi square with n minus 1 degrees of freedom and we are looking for a probability that y is less than x has to be alpha under h. 0. So, if you look at the probability curve, you are looking at this value of x so that this is alpha and this is given by chi square n minus 1 alpha. 
and therefore your decision is going to be reject H0 if n minus 1 s square over sigma naught square is less than chi square with n minus 1 degrees of freedom and alpha probability. So, with this we conclude this session on testing of hypothesis for testing of hypothesis for sample variance. So, sample variance sorry not sample variance it should be population variance sigma square the hypothesis we tested is sigma z square is a given value sigma naught square and we considered three alternative one is a two sided alternative which says that sigma square is not equal to sigma naught square. Second one say that sigma square is greater than sigma naught square and the third hypothesis say that sigma square is less than sigma naught square. In all the cases we found that test statistic y is nothing but n minus 1 sample variance divided by sigma naught square which is distributed as chi square with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And then we derive the 3 tests. Thank you. Thank you.